this. I guess it's my turn to make an announcement, which is that I guess I'll get started. <laughs> um, so I wanted to start today by just finishing up something that I, I, I flubbed yesterday. And so let's start doing some stuff we had already done, and let's define a number field. Let's do a Q adjoin the square root of 5. So I want the number field. I'll do it a little bit different today than I did last time. Um, last time I defined the polynomial ring and then defined the polynomial and then stuck it into the number field here. Instead of defining the polynomial ring, I'm just going to use the command polynomial. And polynomial takes a list, and it's just going to take a list of the coefficients starting with the constant term and going up to however many coefficients you want. So I want this to be, what, minus 5, 0, 1. And that should give me that this should be the number field submit with defining polynomial, well, dollar sign dot 1 squared minus 5, which is exactly what I would expect it to be. This is a little bit nicer because I don't have to go through all the rigmarole of defining what the polynomial ring is, and it allows me to just get into my number field computations immediately. And so I can do, well, I don't want this anymore. Let's do O is the maximal order of K. And so just, and maybe we'll just jump right to U will be the unit group. Sorry. O. And maybe we'll return u just so we can see. Yep, this is an abelian group. I have plus or minus 1, and then I have one unit of infinite order. Let's see what that unit of infinite order is. You might recall, right, this is, if I do u dot 1, it's not going to do anything nice. It's just going to give me back u dot 1. It's not helpful as to what this actually is. So I need to go back and, and make sure I capture the map that comes with this definition, and I'll plug in map and hit submit, and you'll see I wanted u dot 2, right? u dot 1 is negative 1. That's the element of order 2. Sorry about that, because we're not starting at 0 counting, and now you'll see that the second generator is 0 comma 1, and this seems a little bit strange at first because you think this should be 0 comma the square, or well, 0 plus the square root of 5, and well, the square root of 5 shouldn't be a unit. Right? And that's where you have to be careful, right? This isn't a basis for the field. It's not one. My basis u, excuse me, my basis for u is not actually 1 comma the square root of 5. It's actually something else. And so you might want to get your hands on what is this actual element as a real number. So let's embed it into the real numbers by computing its real embeddings. And this was the thing that I forgot yesterday was that real embeddings, this command, doesn't take in, I get it right that time? It doesn't take in a field and return the embedding maps, but it takes in an element and gives you back that element embedded into the real numbers. So there's two real embeddings. One that takes this element to 1.6, this is a ridiculous decimal. And one that takes it to minus 0 0.610, blah, 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 and so forth. So let's just grab the first one of these embeddings and see if we can make sense of what it actually is. It's not the square root of 5, though, right? Sort of 5 would be bigger than 2. And this isn't bigger than 2. And so... And so you might know what this ought to be. Let's look at the real embeddings now. Of, whoops, 1 plus a, whoops, over 2. I forgot a parenthesis. And we'll see that. Oh, I just want the first one. Submit. Yeah, these are really the same thing. And you can check that abstractly before or without embedding anything, uh, u map u dot one equals one half plus a over two, and hit submit. Oh, wait a second, because I want u dot two. Why do I keep doing that? True. And so these really are the same thing. My guess would be, having not checked this, don't get mad if this doesn't work, but you could probably also do... No, let's, let's just leave it. That's fine. 
So this is a good way if you forget that your basis for your ring of integers and your basis for your field, the sort of standard power basis, 1, a, a to the, up to a to the n minus 1, are always the same. And so you might have to translate between what's my basis for my maximal order, my z basis, and what's my basis for my number field. Maybe I didn't pick the right polynomial to generate this. And I guess, so maybe one last thing, you might want the minimal polynomial of map u dot 2, and let's see what we get here. Up. Oh. Thank you. x squared minus x minus 1. You can see from the constant term being minus 1, it's really it's going to be a unit now. But this is a root unit. Maybe this is a better polynomial to pick in order to generate this number field. It still work. Any questions about that? Are feeling okay? So that's how real embeddings work. For some reason, I had thought that you gave it a number field and it spit back the maps. But instead, what you do is you give it an element and it spits back all the possible real embeddings of that element. Complex embeddings go the same way. We just don't have any complex embeddings for this field. So we can talk about that more uh, maybe later tomorrow when I do uh, databases of number fields. But for today, I want to get back, or not get back to, but do something a little bit different or I want to start talking about elliptic curves. And so you've seen some stuff about elliptic curves and Eric's discussions, and, and so you know there are multiple ways that you can define elliptic curves. I'm going to start with just elliptic curves over the rational numbers because it's a little bit easier to just start there with magma. And so here we'll start by defining an elliptic curve by giving it the five invariance. And let's see, I want to be really creative here. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll call this E and see that we get back the elliptic curve that we expect to write with the odd numbers on the left side, and except for five, I guess, the odd numbers, even numbers on the right side. But there is no A5, and it goes to A6 for good reason. Um, so this is one way to define an elliptic curve. You can also define it uh, by giving an ordered pair where you've already put it into uh, depressed form, right? Y squared equals a depressed cubic x squared plus x plus 2 here. So you don't have a quadratic term. You just have an ax plus b here. Another way to define it, depending on what form your, your elliptic curves are in, one's usually, or one's potentially easier than the other one as, just as far as keystrokes go. So let's define a point on our elliptic curve. Let's let p be the point. Well, it's on the elliptic curve, so I'm going to have to coerce it to be on the elliptic curve. So I'm giving it the curve that I want it to be in an exclamation mark, and I just want to give it the x and the y coordinates. 1, comma, minus 2. And let's hit P back. And you'll see that it gives me back P. It's in projective coordinates because, well, it just automatically converts them to projective coordinates so that you have the point at infinity uh, sort of obviously notable. And then, well, what are some things you might want to do with a point? Well, I guess the first thing you might want to do is double it. So you can double it and triple it. And you can negate it. Oops, minus 1, of course, would be good. Notice 3 times P is minus P, so you might expect this is a point of finite order. And you can ask, actually, is what is the order? If you can type order of your point, point of order 4, you could ask for the torsion subgroup. of E, and it will again give you back an abelian group, right? It doesn't give you back the points, it just gives you back a, what, you know, the class is a, 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 an abelian group, and but, and but, yes, then, other words, you can define the group to be G, it comes with a map, and you can ask yourself, or the computer, not yourself, what is the generator of this cyclic group of order four, and it's our point that we defined. Oh, I'm sorry. It's negative the point that we defined before. But, of course, if P generates, in this case, minus P will also generate. Um, let's maybe get ourselves a more. Oh, well, okay. So that settles sort of the torsion question. But you might want to know what the rank is. So there are a couple commands for computing ranks. You can do rank bound of E, which will give you an upper bound for the rank. You can do rank bounds which will give you an upper bound and a lower bound, and you can do, whoops, just rank of E. 
I'll do all these at once. And so the rank bound is zero, which is true. And so is rank zero, which is true because the rank is actually zero and it can provably compute that the rank is zero. And we can see that by our upper bound and our lower bound for our ranks both being the same. So with these rank or rank bound, it gives you a, a, a Boolean operator that tells you whether it's actually true or not that the rank is equal to that. Um, you might be interested in some more information about the rank and the rank bound. So let's define a different curve that I, whoops, that I found earlier that has something interesting. So I want one comma minus one zero. And now things will get a little more interesting. I want this to be five, five, nine, eight and minus Four, five, six, one, two. Oops, one, two. Close, close. Uh, I have two commas there. Thank you. So if I submit this, let's see. So I have rank one. That's not so interesting, although maybe it's more interesting than rank zero. Um, but what I can do, I now can ask for generators of E. That'll give me back generators of the torsion group as well as the infinite part. Maybe it's worth asking what the torsion subgroup is. Of e, submit. Got a point of order of three, so I have a point of order of three, a point of infinite order. And what's actually interesting about this is this curve has non-trivial Shaw. And so I'd like to see that somehow. So there's a command that sort of does everything that I've done here all at once. Let's see if I can type it in correctly. It is Mordell, they, Shaw, information, information, E. Let's see what we get back here. So this is going to give me back tons of information, including what the torsion subgroup is, what the analytic rank is. So it'll compute the analytic rank first. And since the analytic rank is 1, we know that the rank itself actually is 1. It'll then go and compute the 2 Selmer rank. The 2 Selmer rank is um, what you do if you're doing a 2 descent on this elliptic curve in order to figure out the rank. The 2 Selmer rank here turns out to be 3. And this curve actually has non-trivial 2 torsion in its SHA. This is some failure of a local to global principle. And, and it, it um, sort of... It, What's the word I'm looking for? It's what prevents this uh, computation of rank necessarily terminating every single time. It's one of the more interesting objects. And so this curve has Sha isomorphic to Z2 cross Z2. And so we can actually get our hands on that. And then below, it gives us our rank bounds and a generator of a point of infinite order, I think. So let's see. If we come back here to generators, and maybe I'll just comment this out. And do generators. Of e. This should give me back two points. And let's call this points or PTS. And we'll have P be the first element. Q will be the second one. And we'll just ask for the order of P, submit, and that order is 3, and the order of Q should be infinite. Of course, it doesn't return infinity, it returns 0. So if you have a point of infinite order, it'll say the order is 0 rather than saying it's infinite. Okay, and so these are the generators of our Mordell V group. And every point can be written as an integral combination of P and Q, or the coefficient on P really only matters mod 3. Okay, so you really can get a lot of information, but it's worth pointing out you don't always get, if you start searching large uh, coefficients elliptic curves, sort of arithmetically complex elliptic curves, you won't always be able to provably compute the rank. But for all the curves in Cremona's database, you actually can. And so you might be wondering, is this a reasonably well-known curve? Does it come from the Cremona da database? Mona reference of E. It'll give you back the Cremona reference. 
if you're familiar with what that is, this is 96, 9, 4,962, oh gosh, it's that number B2. So this comes with a couple pieces of information. The first piece of information is the conductor, all the primes that divide that are primes of bad reduction. B is which isogeny class in that conductor, and then the number is which number in the isogeny class it is. So there's lots of information here, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this stuff tomorrow. I want to talk about the LMFDB database so that you can see what that's all about. There's a lot of wonderful information there. It's another way to access this. But the Cremona reference is just one way that that elliptic curves have been categorized up to a certain conductor. Um, is there something else I wanted to do? I guess I could show you. You can compute the discriminant of E. Submit. There's the discriminant. You might want to factor this. Factorization. And I'm doing this not to teach you how to do factorization because you've already seen this, but this should throw an error. And if you look at it, you might think to yourself, well, why the heck is there an error here? Well, reading the error, it says that I have a bad argument type. The given argument is a rational number. It doesn't want to factor rational numbers. So if you really wanted to factor this conductor, what you need to do is take the rational number and factor its numerator. Whoops, don't click there, though. Click up here. Oh my goodness. Four. And we'll need another parenthesis. Hit submit. And it is an integer already. And so there are, there's our discriminant factor. So two divides it to the sixth, three divides it to the fifth, and nine nineteen. So those are our bad, our primes of bad reduction. Come on, reference. Blah, 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 blah. Wonderful. So maybe you want to do. Um, some searching through a database of elliptic curves. This Cremona database is accessible in Magma. It's easy to load. You just do, sorry, D is going to be the Cremona database. Cremona database. And then you can, can in the Cremona database, pull out elliptic curves of a given conductor. So I'll do elliptic curves, plural, from D, and I want the ones of conductor 11. So here are all my elliptic curves of conductor 11 um, given in their Weierstrass equation. So maybe you want the first one, so you could pull off the first one and just say, let's let... E, B, that, and maybe we want to just compare this to the Cremona so E, this should be 11A1, I would imagine, and it is 11A1. If you change the 1 to a 2, of course you should get a different ellipt elliptic curve. And so this is a nice way to search through elliptic curves without having to define every single one of their models individually, load this database and search through the database. So let's count some elliptic curves and let's, let's put them in bins by their rank. Let's put them, if they're rank 0 in one bin, if they're rank 1 in another bin, and see how many of them have rank 0 and how many of them have rank 1 up to some conductor. So I'm going to do this a different way than I did last time. I'm going to just define some counters. Let's let rank 0 be our counter for how many elliptic curves of rank 0 we have. Rank 1 will be our uh, counter for how many elliptic curves of rank 1 we have. And then I just want to keep track of my total elliptic curves that I'm going to check because, of course, it's not going to be that my total elliptic curves that I check are going to be rank 1 plus rank 0, because there might be some rank two curves. I'm just not going to keep track of that information, but we'll still realize that they exist. It might also be interesting to do this by parity. When do you have even rank and when do you have odd rank? And so what I want to do now is for my elliptic curves, or excuse me, I want to do for N. Do I want to do capital N? Sure. Let's do capital N in. I'm going to go from 11 up to capital N max. So I should define another parameter here, n max, that I'll just keep outside, and maybe I'll even put it up here, n max, and let's start with 100 because I'm tame. Scroll down here, I want to do, and I'll end my 4 because I always forget to do that, and I want to do 4e in 
elliptic curves, n, excuse me, d comma n. So I'm running over all the elliptic curves in my Cremona database of conductor n, where n is going to run from 11 to whatever I set n max to be. I want to do, and let's do, if it's rank 1, if the rank of E equals 1, then, let's end my if again. Did I already forget an end 4? No one's surprised by that, which is good. And 4, this is why you should end them before you start your next thought. Oh, thank you. I would have caught that too. This is, why you get, this is how you get good at reading error messages. <laughs> Have we all taught a class before where you, you get up thinking like, oh, this arithmetic is going to be really easy to do. I'll just multiply these two three-digit numbers together. I could do it easily in the privacy of my own home. And then you go to do it at the board, and all of a sudden you freeze up. This, this um, experience you're witnessing secondhand. All right, so let's start with if the rank is 0, then we'll redefine rank 0 to be rank 0 plus 1. So we'll add 1 to my counter, and else will let... Oh, I don't want to do that. I lied. And if, right, because it could be non-zero without being 1. And now if uh, the rank of E equals 1, then, again, end your if statement. And now I'm regretting making this window smaller. So you can actually see what the heck's happening here. Rank 1, then we'll do rank 1 is rank 1 plus 1. Okay, and of course this isn't going to return anything. So maybe we want to do rank 1. Oh, and I forgot to keep track of my total. So before I do any of this, let's do total, total plus 1. There's this battle between having nice ver verbose counters that are clear what they're doing versus fewer keystrokes erring on the side of making things apparent. So now let's see what rank 1 divided by total is. And maybe we should just preemptively make this a real field element. And submit. And please work. Huzzah. Rank 1 divided by total. And now let's do rank Zero divided by total. Oh, I need uh, semicolons. There we go. And it's looking pretty biased towards rank zero curves, but we haven't checked that far out, right? Curves out to conductor 100. I mean, how many curves have we really checked? Total number of curves we've checked is 306, which seems like a lot, but it's not, right? Doesn't actually seem like that many. So let's see what happens if we push this a little further. Let's go to 10 to the third. Submit. This is going to take a little longer. The last one took 7 tenths of a second. Now we're checking 5,000 curves, and it's getting a little closer to 50 50. It's 60 40 at this point. Maybe we'll try one more 10 to the fourth. The good news is we can always panic out of this. Again, just be careful hitting the cancel button more than once because it does turn into the clear button, and you'd have to watch me type this all over again, which is to say you'd have to watch me panic and go on to the next thing. <laughs> I wonder how long the last one checked. I should have said that. Ten seconds. In computational time. It takes a while to get to Australia and back. So we'll give it another moment before I panic out of this. I did this for bigger numbers. So, everybody having a good day? <laughs> Make it a little bit smaller. I'd like to get this closer to 50-50. Let's do uh, 5 times 10 to the third. And if that doesn't work, we'll just go on to the next thing. It, it ran fast this morning. Uh, 
Uh, spoiler alert, I did this example this morning. Um, but maybe I'm forgetting something. Of course, the, what's that? You were closer to Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I was back there, which is technically <laughs> closer to Australia. Really, what it is is I was on a Mac. I don't want to start that argument. It almost <laughs> lost me a PhD advisor. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> have been demoted again out of favorite student. All right, well, I don't think that this is going to terminate in a reasonable amount of time, but it might be an interesting thing for you to try and do on your own time. It should run. I mean, I did it for, for larger numbers than this, and it ran in a reasonable amount of time. But So one of the things they teach you uh, when you're learning how to teach is that if you ask the class if there are any questions, you should count to 10 to yourself and not just move on to the next thing. Because what you do, right, is you ask, are there any questions, and you get uncomfortable standing in front of people, waiting for people to ask questions. But if you just move on really quickly, you don't ever get those questions that people have, right? You have to coerce some questions. Maybe now would be a good time for questions, but yeah? So we're only seeing terms of frame zero to rank one. We should expect to see anything with higher rank. Yeah, I mean, we definitely should. There are higher rank ones. It might be interesting to ask yourself, when does the first rank two elliptic curve appear in the Cremona database? When does the first elliptic curve of rank three? This is all the kind of thing that you could do here. And we could get that information out of this search by just seeing eventually when those two numbers, those two percentages don't add up to one. But we should be, I mean, I think in this search we would get rank three curves. And we're bumping into, right, the computation of computing the rank is non-trivial, particularly once Shaw starts showing up in a, in a, a really meaningful way. I imagine there's a way to, to pull the rank out of the database without computing it immediately. And there we go. So we've, we've reached our limits, and now you should all go out and, and download your own copy of Sage through your home institution. Or excuse me, Magma. Don't, don't get Sage. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you can get Sage, too, actually. Um, run them next to each other and see who's is quicker. So maybe uh, instead of belaboring this and trying to get this closer to 50-50, which it does as N goes, gets bigger and bigger, it does get closer and closer to 50-50, half the curves are you're, closer. You're going up to conductor 5,000? Yeah. We're going right 50-77. 50 so we haven't seen one yet. We're almost there. Almost there. Do you have the Cremona reference? Uh, that would be 57 Fifty-seven seven. What is it? Five seven seven. Five zero seven seven eight one. So, if you want to define an elliptic curve by its Cremona reference, you just give it instead of the the five or the two in or the two coefficients, just give it the Cremona reference in quotation marks. This is another thing you should never do when teaching a class. This is funny. You can just give it in quotation marks, and then we can ask, what's the rank of E? Hopefully this won't take too long, three, and it really is rank three. So Alvaro didn't lie. <laughs> He's trustworthy for now. <laughs> Might be interesting to ask what the torsion subgroup is. I would imagine it's uh, trivial. But we haven't seen a trivial torsion subgroup yet. And it is, Bielen group of order one. Great. So the next thing you might want to do is define an elliptic curve not over, and let's just stay with this curve because why not, uh, not over the rationals, but say over a finite field. And so let's take this elliptic curve and instead of thinking of, of it over the rationals, see what E actually is here, let's reduce it down sort of surprisingly small coefficients for how large the conductor is, right? This is maybe a good indicator to that organizing these by conductors and the best way to do it, maybe there's a better way to organize the curve. There's certainly other ways in terms of size and coefficients. Uh, but that's either here or there. Let's reduce this mod P for some primes where it actually makes sense to do so. So the first thing you might want to get your hands on are what are the primes that it doesn't make sense to reduce this mod P. So let's figure out what the bad primes are. So bad primes of E. Oh, look at that. 577 is prime. Did we all know that? No? I'm surprised you didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know it either, actually. So that's our only bad prime. And again, this is lining up with the conductor really is giving you information about what the bad primes are. And let's change the ring. Let's do change 
Maybe I'll call it EP. We'll do change ring E to, okay, for Keith's sake, I'll do finite field, and maybe we'll do five, because again, two and three aren't primes. And EP. That was this same elliptic curve, but you can see I really have just reduced the coefficients mod five, and maybe there's been a little bit of normalization, but it looks like, no, I really have just reduced the coefficients mod five, and I can do lots of things with this now that it's an elliptic curve over a finite field, because it's an elliptic curve over a finite field, it can only have finitely many points, and it's sensible to ask for a list of all of those points, and I can just say, well, what are the points? Don't type what are the points, let's just type points. Oh, God. Oh, because I, uh, so... It doesn't work if you don't have, I gave you the wrong e, EP, right? Submit. And here's a list of all the points here. So there are, I don't want to count them in front of you, so I'll just put a number sign there. It's not a hashtag. There are 10 points, right? And so now I can have a list of all of them. I can get my hands on any one of them. Point, uh, let's say point P will be the first point on that list. And I can ask for its order again. Submit. Oh, the identity. So maybe code of the second one as order two. And you start to wonder, well, what? Well, I guess the group structure here isn't going to be that interesting if it's a got ten elements and a point of order two. There should be a point of order five. So it should be Z two or Z five or Z ten, right? But you can ask, what is the abelian group of E P? Submit, and there it is. It's got a single generator. It's cyclic of order 10. You can do things like ask, is this cyclic? Yes, it is cyclic. We knew that, though. Now, but what happens if I change my finite field of order 5 to my finite field of order 25? We should probably pick up both points of order 2 here. In a quadratic extension, we should be picking up our second point of the splitting field of some quadratic polynomial, namely the division polynomial, and now it's not cyclic anymore. Because I have a bigger field. I've gone to an extension field, and, well, since we know it's not cyclic, let's not ask if it's cyclic again, and let's see exactly what that is. And look at that. I have exactly picked up my other point of order 2. Now I have Z2 cross E10. Full 2 torsion and a point of order 5. And so you might wonder, well... How does this grow if I do, this should be fine, though I've been wrong before today. Oh, it's just back to being cyclic, right? Maybe if I make this 10, oops. <coughs> we may have overdone it. Let's count to 10. Are there any questions while we wait? Okay, cancel. Dumb it down to four. Submit. There we go, Z8, Z80. Pretty interesting. And so you might wonder, well, what are the fields of definition of these points that I'm picking up? What are the degree extensions that I need? And these are really associated to our division polynomials. You might want to compute the division polynomials for this elliptic curve for different, um, oops, for different uh, N. So let's compute the division polynomial of our elliptic curve EP, and let's do the four division polynomial. So this polynomial will give us the x coordinates, the roots of this, this polynomial. Well, I should get a couple polynomials back. Let's, let's do this, though. Let's do f, x, and now f. There we go. So there's our four division polynomial. The roots of this polynomial are the x coordinates of the points that are killed by multiplication by four. And you'll notice sort of a degree eight extension after you factor out the x to get the splitting field of this. And we picked up our full. Well, let's see what we can do here. So EP right now is defined over, well, let's see if it factors. 
factorization, submit. And of course it does. Right? It factors. Now, why am I getting dollar sign dot ones here? It's not the variable, right? But it's the element of the field gf5 to the fourth, right? There's some primitive element there that I haven't defined. If I wanted to see what it actually was, right, I would come back here and I would say, sorry, Keith, gf5 to the fourth. I'll call this f a. Have I doubled down on capital F yet? No, nope, I don't think so. I'll change this to capital F. Oh, five squared. Thank you. To the fourth. Submit. Up. Oh, perfect. Semicolon. And now submit. And now you can see it really is just that primitive element floating around. This is why it's nice to define these things as you go, just so the outputs are easier to read, but it doesn't make anything easier. So these are the x coordinates. Not necessarily the y coordinates. So you might need a quadratic extension above this in order to get all the torsion points, but it's at least a good start. And so you might wonder, well, is a to the well? These are all kind of boring, um, but you might wonder if, given an element, is it a square? Let's say a plus one. Is that a square? Oh, I'm still computing the factorization of this. That's okay. No, it's not. Of course, let's see. A squared plus one. No, but of course, if I do minus one, I think. I want to get one that actually is, because it doesn't just return a Boolean anymore. It'll return actually this one of the square roots as well. Rats. I've... I've uh, Alvaro motivated me to leave my notes, and so now I might have to mess around a little bit. Well, oh, fine, plus 11, why not? What's that? By giving me this example of an elliptic curve of rank 3. So there we go. Of course, A squared's a square. <laughs> Didn't say it was going to be a good example. But at least you can see what the output is when it's a square, right? This time it's going to give you a Boolean, but then it's also going to give you one of the square roots. Okay. What's the other one? <laughs> Minus A. Great. Good job. I know. I was supposed to count to 10. <laughs> All right. So let's see if we can do some elliptic curves over some function fields just so we can work a little more generically. Let's start with... <coughs> The following field, I'm going to let F be, oh, how am I doing on time? Okay, 10 minutes. I'm going to have a function field F. It's going to have two variables in it, capital A and capital B. Function field. Let's work over GF5. And I have to tell it that I have two variables just so it doesn't get mad at me. And maybe I'll put a capital F there just so you can see what it returns. Multivariable rational function field of rank 2 over GF5 with my variables A and B. And now I can define an elliptic curve E. And maybe I'll just return E. Oh, I'm sorry. I want, <laughs> dum dum. I want this to be A and B. Hit submit. And now I have my elliptic curve where my linear term is my undetermined A and my uh, constant term is my undetermined B over GF5. And you can start asking questions like what is the elliptic curve's discriminant? What's its J invariant? These kinds of things. So elliptic, uh, sorry, J invariant. And there's its J invariant. You could start evaluating this for different values of A and B. You can ask what the discriminant is. Submit. Look at that. Discriminant and the J invariant aren't so, so different after all. Um, what else would I want to do? I can get division polynomials. And maybe we'll do four again. And let's factor this. Let's grab the factorization. So 
you can imagine what I really have here is a generic elliptic curve in sort of short Weierstrass form, right, where I just have an A and a B, yet this polynomial is factoring. Generically, you wouldn't expect there to be points of order four, right? So generically, an elliptic curve maybe shouldn't have any points. Yeah, a weird thing to say. So why is this polynomial factoring? Well, it has an obvious factor. The four-division polynomial should be divisible by the two-division polynomial. But the points of order two are sort of a subset of the points of order four. So we don't usually think about them as, as exact order four. Right? This is the things that are killed by multiplication by four. So the things that are killed by multiplication by two should also be killed by multiplication by four. So you might want to divide those extra pieces out. And so you can do just div, you know slash and divide by, or you can do div... E two submit and now it's irreducible and now you really have the, the sort of exact order of four x coordinates here. Right? The reason to do div instead of just divided by is as soon as you do divided by, even if it goes into it cleanly, you're no longer a polynomial; you're a rational function. So the type changes. Maybe I should let's see if I'm lying to you. I really hope I'm not. Type, submit. So this is a polynomial. And if I change this to a divided by, now, nah, yes, I didn't lie. It's, it's in the function field now. So if you apply factorization now to this, I should get an error. Submit. Excellent, right? In particular, you might want to adjoin the x-coordinates of one of these polynomials. You might want to adjoin the x-coordinates to your field. So you would do a join number field or extension, your base field, and then that polynomial. If you give it a element of the function field, you're going to have a problem. These are sort of quirky things that are worth being aware of, though. So div will return an error if, it, if you have two polynomials and the one you're dividing by doesn't cleanly go into it, where the divided by won't, but you'll end up with a different type of element, or the, the sort of slash won't. So let's see if I call this now f, submit. I can look at the extension of gf5 by my polynomial f, and maybe I want to give this a name, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Let's call it, well, I'm not very creative, so we'll do k dot little a, and let's see what k is. k is an error. Right hand side is invalid for this constructor. Extension of g of f by f. It may not, oh, 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 because it's not an extension of F, excuse me, of GF5. It would be an extension of capital F. Oh, and it'll only let me do it if I have one variable. So magma doesn't have extensions of multivariable function fields implemented. Let's say maybe you came back here and changed it to a single function field, uh, a, a function field with a single variable, and maybe instead, let's define it to be elliptic curve, let's define the elliptic curve by giving it a J invariant. Have we talked about the J invariant at all? And I guess I computed one down below, but the J invariant is a way to define an isomorphism class of elliptic curves. So you should be able to give this a J invariant, it should return an elliptic curve, so elliptic curve J invariant. Oh, I'm sorry, it's from J invariant, capital F from, and maybe we'll do A cubed. Is it going to be our J invariant? Let's return E and see, submit, and look at that. The J invariant is A cubed, and here's our elliptic curve. Still throwing me an error, though. Well, I'll get back to you about that. This won't be the last time I'll have to get back to you about something. But... Now you can start working with more generic elliptic curves over finite fields where you don't have to pick what A and B are. You can think about them as indeterminants, work, see what you can see, 
and then start plugging in, well, what if A is 5? What if A is 6? What if A is not 5? Because, well, 5 is 0 here. Right? These kinds of things. Um, so let's maybe go back to an elliptic curve over... Uh, The rationals, one, two, three, four, five, bad primes here, submit, our 11, and that, let's do EP, will be our reduced curve, we'll do change ring again, E, and we'll change it to GF, well, 7, let's do 13. And just double check that EP is what we want it to be, and we're not going to get any errors. So you can start asking questions like we saw today in Eric's talk. We might have complex multiplication. We might be super singular. So let's ask ourselves, is super singular or super special, if that's your preferred nomenclature? No, it is not. I wonder... E, can we get the endomorphisms of E? Nope, doesn't want to do it. It might be endomorphism ring. Let's try that. Submit. Nope, not that either. Another one I'll get back to you on tomorrow. You should be able to compute exactly what the endomorphism ring is up to isomorphism. Let's see what the abelian group is for this elliptic curve. E, P. Huh, interesting that it's Z mod 13. So we have a point of order 13 here. Um, maybe just as a, a, I only have two minutes, so maybe I'll we'll stop there. Unless, are there questions? Anything that I didn't do with elliptic curves that you'd like to be able to do? Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot, lots of things. What's that? I am. One, two, ten. Um, so tomorrow what I want to talk about is um, some more databases. Like we saw the Cremona database today. Tomorrow I want to talk. Magma comes with a database of number fields. I want to do some work with that, looking at class groups and class numbers, looking at some statistics there. But then I also want to show you the uh, LMFDB, the L function and modular form database that has a bunch of great information about L functions that Keith's been talking about these kinds of things, so I want to introduce that next time. So we'll do a little less magma and a little more just poking around on the Internet, something I'm actually good at. All right. Thank you.